so we give the report on the IVS. Uh, so that's basically an updated version of the report that Rüdiger gave uh, in July in uh, Berlin. Um, maybe starting off, uh, just some uh, note on the personnel change. Uh, so in the IVS, we have a new uh, network coordinator. That's uh, Alexander Neithart. Uh, he's the coordinator since the beginning of the year, uh, working at Geodetic Observatory um, and employed at Technical University of Munich. So we're really looking forward to having him. Uh, as we've seen a different resolution earlier on, also in the IVS, we have a resolution at the IUGG. Uh, so that was adopted also in Berlin. Uh, and that's on improving protection of geodetic observatories from active radio services. So that's a similar one that was done for the IAU uh, a year earlier, I think about. So this is about RFI protection from ground and space-based radio transmitters. So we're talking about mobile phones, 5G or also 4G for ground-based or uh, large satellite constellations, mega constellations such as uh, Starlink or, or OneWeb. Um, so the, the notion is uh, uh, in, a, in an ideal world, uh, we would have uh, local coordination zones for our observatories or also radio quiet zones. Uh, and beyond that, uh, we try to work with the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union and other organizations uh, to protect certain frequencies. Of course, there's a strong commercial interest, uh, so that would be a, a very tall uh, a bar to, to, to take, but at least we can try uh, the best that we can at that. Um, I think it was Daniela, she was already mentioned earlier that we have uh, the legacy SX system in, in VLBI, as well as the VIGO system, which is the, uh, the new development, the next generation system. So in the IVS, we basically uh, operate uh, both networks uh, in, in parallel right now where the SX system is still the, the workhorse basically uh, used for uh, producing most of the IVS products. Uh, so currently that's about 40 stations uh, contributing to that and it's shown in, in the map. It's a, a large variety of uh, radio telescopes. So that ranges from uh, dish diameters of six meter uh, through a hundred meters. Um, so many are old and also the bigger ones, they, they are slow and they deform. Um, so that's why we are, are working on the, the next generation, the Vigos. Um, so we, we started a few years back really uh, in an operational sense uh, and having right now, since the beginning of this year, about 12 stations and adding also the uh, stations in the Southern hemisphere that is Hobart and uh, Catherine to it. Um, and uh, this network will be more homogeneous. So the, the dish sizes will be 12 to 13 meter about and uh, Rüdiger pointed out here that we also have twin telescopes, that is two antennas at the same site. Uh, that's mostly in Europe, uh, as he is from Onsela. So there's one in Onsela, in Wetzel, and in New Orleans on, on Spitsbergen. Um, maybe a few words, uh, as there was a danger that we would lose one of our observatories, that is uh, Walkworth Observatory in New Zealand. Um, um, the story is that uh, the uh, Auckland University of Technology divested itself uh, of the observatory in mid-December 2022. Uh, that was basically uh, previously announced and there was an, let's say, an outcry uh, within New Zealand uh, and also from the international uh, community. Uh, so there was a strong push uh, to keep that uh, observatory running. Um, so the New Zealand government put in interim funding for continued operations for the first half of this year. And then a new funding mechanism was established and it's in, in place now. So now we have a public-private partnership uh, between uh, Space Ops uh, in New Zealand and uh, Land Information New Zealand, which is the geodetic survey of the New Zealand. Um, Space Ops is basically the main operator and uh, LINS is basically uh, getting uh, observing time for IVS uh, sessions. So the good news there is that it's a, a legacy SX uh, system right now that they also have the plan on upgrading to a Vigo system. So this all came about through um, big help from the international community, including uh, the GIGOS Bureau. So uh, thank you a lot for, for making this happen. Uh, maybe a, a few words uh, to the performance of the different systems. Uh, so that's what Rüdiger put together last time. Um, so he compares the SX to the left and uh, Vigos to the right uh, over a time frame of uh, three years uh, in terms of station position repeatabilities. Uh, so for the SX system, uh, we have uh, in the horizontal maybe five millimeter and for the vertical 10 millimeter. And if you compare that to, to Vigos uh, there, the numbers are two millimeter horizontal and four uh, for vertical. 
Uh, if you do the math, that's basically uh, an improvement of 2.5 uh, going from legacy uh, to Vigos. That's what we see right now. So how does the network look like and will evolve over the next few years? So basically this is showing um, uh, different stages. Uh, so the operational network right now is uh, with blue triangles. Uh, the, the red antennas or triangles here are uh, the ones that are already in the ground. So there's hardware there. So it's only signal chain work going on. And we do expect a few of those antennas listed here to be uh, added to the, let's say to the blue category and probably already should change uh, Santa Maria in, on the Azores uh, to that category. Uh, but there's also uh, Shishan in Shanghai, uh, Hata Beisuk uh, early next year, and uh, also Metahobi coming up. So there's lots of changes there. Uh, and then there are a, a few uh, that are still in the planning stage uh, or further advanced like Photo Laser, where uh, the factory acceptance test for the new antenna is uh, happening next week. Uh, so we are looking for uh, the first light there maybe sometime in 2025. Uh, as Mike pointed out earlier, uh, we have gaps. Uh, you see Africa, uh, we would like to see more antennas there. South America, and if I look at North America, also to the Northwest would be a, a good place to have another antenna really. Um, maybe a few words to the observing plan, some changes uh, intended for uh, next observing year 2024. Uh, and as Daniela mentioned, uh, our strange uh, start times. Uh, so in the observing program, uh, we have uh, basically 24 hour sessions, which I uh, go to next, uh, but first the uh, intensive, which are one hour sessions uh, intended to determine uh, UT1 basically. And uh, they are run at uh, the times that are uh, indicated in the plot uh, to, the, to the top, so current 2023. Um, so, um, the, the intent is going forward next year uh, to align that more uh, the IBS, uh, the IGS rapids um, that is using the session midpoint uh, of the IBS sessions uh, for 0 UT, 12 UT, or 6 or 18 UT. Uh, so we intend to start uh, doing such a transition already in the, the last quarter of this year uh, and then uh, continue next year. Uh, there are constraints on the station side, so not every station can uh, freely observe at a, at a given time. So that puts constraints on, uh, so they have uh, still discussion going on and uh, run through different uh, alternatives. Um, so, but it's work in progress. And uh, for the 24 hour session, uh, we have one 24 hour session for Vigos planned for next year. And we wanna change it so that the midpoint of the session is at uh, zero UT. So it will be an observing time starting at 12 UT uh, on the Wednesday and end on the Thursday at 12 UT. And then uh, maybe a hint at the end, uh, we have our general meeting uh, next year in the first week of March in Japan in Scuba. Uh, that will include uh, festivities for the uh, 25th anniversary of the IBS. Um, so our Japanese colleagues have put together a nice uh, trailer. So maybe you'll see one or the other of you uh, at that meeting. And with that, uh, I'd like to thank you.